favorite fairy tales retold by julia darrow cowles the magic snuff box a folk tale once upon a time there was a poor young man who started out to seek his fortune he traveled many many miles and nothing whatever happened there is no luck in this he said to himself i hope my fortunes will soon mend even as he spoke his foot struck something hard in the path it sounded like metal he brushed aside the forest leaves and brought to view something white and shining picking up the object he examined it and to his surprise found it to be a silver snuff-box some fine gentleman must have dropped it he thought for the box was set with brilliant jewels he opened it and as he did so the box said ask me and i will help you the young man was so astonished that he almost dropped the box and quite too frightened to do anything but snapped the lid quickly shut but he put the box safely away in his pocket and travelled on toward night he came in sight of a great stone castle such as he had never seen before he walked all around it wondering at its size and its magnificence as he reached the front gates there came out a man wearing beautiful garments and with a crown upon his head so the young man knew that he was a king and that this must be a king's castle the young man lay down that night in the woods opposite the castle to sleep and while he slept he dreamed he dreamed that he was the owner of a castle even grander than that of the king and his castle stood so close to the castle of the king that the king was envious of him he wakened from his dream it was still dark he turned over and as he did so he felt the silver snuff-box in his pocket then he remembered that the snuff-box had said ask me and i will help you and he thought why not try it so he took the snuff-box from his pocket and opened it ask me and i will help you it said as before well then said the youth i ask for a castle finer and larger than that of the king i want it to sparkle with gold and jewels can you help me to that he had scarcely finished speaking when a most magnificent building rose as if by magic from the ground and in the morning when the king saw it he was too greatly astonished for words for his own castle looked quite mean beside it he hastened to the golden castle and when he saw its owner he said young man i will give you my daughter in marriage if we may all come to your castle to live and so the young man said let me see your daughter first so the king returned and brought his daughter the princess and she was so modest and so beautiful that the young man fell in love with her at once and he was glad to do as the king wished so the young man and the princess were married and they had everything they could desire and the king and queen came to live with them in the golden castle but the queen was jealous and envious and when she learned about the magic snuff-box she could not rest day or night for thinking how she could get possession of it at last she bribed one of the servants to find out where the young man who was now a prince kept the box at night then she bribed another servant to get the box and bring it to her as soon as she had the box in her hands she opened it and it said ask me and i will help you then the queen said i want this golden castle set down far across the sea where the king and i may live in it and have it for our own and almost as soon as she had spoken it was done but the prince and the princess with their children were left behind and had only the stone castle to live in and as the magic snuff-box was gone they became very poor because the prince could no longer have things for the asking then one day the prince said to the princess his wife i will set forth and seek my golden castle and my magic snuff-box of silver and jewels so bidding the princess and his children a sorrowful farewell he journeyed forth he travelled a long long distance and at last he came to the house of the moon he told his story and when he had finished he asked o oh moon in your travels over land and sea have your rays shone upon my castle of gold with its jewelled casements and the moon replied no my son no such castle have i seen but go to the sun his rays shine farther and more brightly than mine perhaps he has seen it so the prince journeyed on again for a long long distance till at last he came to the house of the sun 
he told his story and when he had finished he asked o oh, son in your travels over land and sea have your rays shone upon my castle of gold with its jewelled casements and the son replied no my son no such castle have i seen but go to the wind he penetrates where my rays cannot go perhaps he has seen it so the prince journeyed on again for a long long distance and at last he came to the house of the wind he told his story and when he had finished he asked o oh, wind in your journeys over land and sea have you searched out my castle of gold with its jewelled casements and the wind answered yes my son such a castle have i found it is far away over the water but come with me and you shall soon reach it with that he picked up the young prince and carried him more swiftly than thought across the great sea and set him down in a woods and there close at hand he beheld his golden castle that night he hid himself in the woods till all the castle lights were out and then he let himself in with the golden key which he had carried all these years since his castle was stolen away and he crept up to the king's bedchamber and found the magic snuff-box he quickly opened the lid and at once the box said ask me and i will help you at that the king and queen wakened and they called out who is here help help but the prince was too quick for them before the courtiers and the ladies-in-waiting and the soldiers could reach the chamber he cried take me with my golden castle back to my wife and children but leave the king and queen here in this land beyond the sea and it was done the king and queen found themselves left without a roof over their heads but the prince with his golden castle and his magic snuff-box was back in his own land with his wife and children and they were happy all the rest of their days end of section eighteen